Well, good morning everyone. It is quarter past seven. I have been up for almost two hours. I woke up at about six. Um, slept pretty well last night, considering how it didn't actually get that cold. I've been so lucky on this trip. I um, When I planned it, I was like, oh yep, I'm gonna get rain. It's basically gonna drizzle on me every day for five days. That's kind of what I was you know, prepared for. But I literally had drizzle on me on and off the first day no rain yesterday uh it sprinkled a bit last night the sun's still just coming up and it's all overcast again today so i might get rained on or sprinkled on drizzled whatever today as well but that's okay so i've been really lucky overnight the temperature only got down to five degrees it's about six or seven degrees now so i've had no issues with temperature whatsoever so thank you lord fantastic the reason I'm up so early, or one of the reasons I'm up so early, is because we've gone back down into lockdown here in Victoria. I've got the uh, the Spot GPS beacon with me, obviously. You guys see it sitting on my chest all the time. I have it running. And normally what I do is I hit the button first thing in the morning to send a message to Joanne to say, yep, I'm okay. And basically I've got two messages. One says okay, and that I'm okay, and one says this is where I'm setting up camp. So normally I hit the I'm okay in the morning to say, yep, I'm off and running. And then I hit the track feature, so every 10 minutes it leaves a breadcrumb you know, trail as I go along. And then when I get to wherever I'm camping at night, I hit the camp button, sends a message to jo Joanne, this is where I'm camping. And up until now, it's been fine. I used to print off a map of where I was going, because I'm always trying to be very conscious of if something was to happen to me and Joanne had to try and fight, figure out where I was, she would have enough information to take to the police or take to search and rescue to come and find me. So I used to print off a map with you know, the plot, the route I was going to take. But once I got the spot GPS, I didn't bother because it leaves a track of where I was going. So I figure if something's to happen to me, you can jump on the website and you can see basically up until 10 minutes ago where I was. Well, not last night, the night before, I hit the GPS, hit the I'm camping here. Happy days, went to bed. No worries, Joanne got that message. Yesterday morning, either I forgot to do it or it didn't go through. I'm gonna say I forgot because I haven't had the spot function, the spot unit uh, not work for me yet. So I think I must've forgot to hit the I'm okay before I started heading off. And I hit the track button, so off it went and the track was tracking me all day. Well, yesterday afternoon, I normally camp at about, set up, Joanne normally gets a message about 4, 4.30 that I am setting up camp. Well, 4.30 rolled around yesterday afternoon. Joanne hadn't heard from me in the morning and all day, and she was freaking out thinking, oh, Jesus, something happened to him because I haven't seen anything all day. So she waited till about 5, and then she was like, I don't know what to do. I'm going to have to go to the police station and you know, see what I have to do. And so that's what she did. So Joanne was filing a missing missing persons report for me at the local police station. And while she was there showing them how the that she gets these messages, I had obviously arrived here last night totally oblivious to it. Like, oh, I've been hiking all day, had a great day. Got here, hit the, I'm setting up camp here. And then it sent off the message. Joanne is sitting there at the police station and all of a sudden the next email comes in saying, I'm setting up camp here. And she's like, oh my goodness, he's there, he's okay. And they were like, all right, beautiful. But they were full on. They were starting to figure out, asking her, you know, what had I packed? Did I have enough food? Was I gonna have enough stuff to keep me warm? You know, where was I going? All this type of stuff. So what it highlighted to me was the fact that Joanne didn't realize, or I haven't explained to her, or I haven't probably left uh, instructions to show her how to log into the website to access the tracking. So she thought she only had access, well, as far as she knew, she only had access to the emails that came in. And when you click on those emails on your emergency list, it only shows you the dot of where you were when you sent that. So when I send an I'm okay, it just shows her Ben was here. If I send a camp one, it says, oh, Ben's camping here. And it doesn't show you the breadcrumb trail in between. You actually have to log into my account. And I thought I'd provide her with those details, but that aside, um, I'm gonna get that all sorted out. But that was dramas last night. So I rang her last night, heard about all that. And then she says, oh yeah, we're in lockdown again. And I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, we've gone into lockdown, five reasons to leave home, not allowed to go further than five Ks from home, no more than two hours for exercise. And I'm like, uh, I'm like 25 kilometers out of Dalesford. And she's like, yeah, I spoke to the police and they said, well, there's nothing you can do. Like once he gets phone reception, and he finds out, then he'll just have to keep going until he gets there. So guess what I'm doing today? 
Now, that all said, have a look at what we covered yesterday. So we camped, uh, we, were, we were at the top of that one there, so we camped there last night. So hiked all the way down here, happy days, happy days, happy days. Uh, this, I'll be honest, was all, um, I was a bit worried about getting water from this point, but really, I think it was probably even just along this section here, there were houses, yeah, actually it was probably just there. There were houses along here so if you're ever desperate for water you could probably get some water from there all the way down through here jumped onto this road hiked all the way down blah 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 through town Frieswood. uh not really much there jumped across through here down we go this is all track 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 water there vaughn why is there water there that i didn't know about i know it was there toilets water I don't know. Wasn't sure. I'm going to have to compare that afterwards when I get home and look at the actual route I took to make sure I did go through that section. I'm, probably, I'm sure I did. Why? It must be a toilets? Car park? Ah. Maybe that was the river crossing where the water is really high, but I would have thought that was closer to Dalesford. Yeah. Dry digging track. Down we went. Happy days. All through here. We started putting down some distance. All this. Wow, we covered some distance yesterday down through here. I asked, we passed a couple of little spots there where there was some uh, the old wrecks and relics of previous uh, establishments down through here. Stones Gully, yep, all through. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Sebastian's Gully. So this feels like where I was hiking through yesterday afternoon. So all through here, drowned under dry diggings. Holy mackerel, we covered some distance. All through here, hooked it around. Just down through here, all this. And then we got to this point here. So this is where I uh, camped last night. Oh, there's a river down there. Interesting path there, down to the water. Interesting, interesting. Uh, I'm not worried about water tonight because we're going to go all the way today. Today, we so we got to 47 kilometres. Yesterday it was a 27 kilometre, no, sorry, 25 kilometre day. So today we are going to hightail it down, all the way down through here to the, there's a big main road just down here from memory. Dismiss. Getting notifications. Yep, big main road. Cut across this. And then really, just after you get to that, you get to Hepburn Springs. Now, Joanne is actually going to come and pick me up, even though we're in lockdown. I can't get home without her coming to pick me up, so that is what it is. Uh, once I get to Hepburn Springs, she can pick me up anywhere along here, because she's actually going to pick... The end of the trail is just here. At, I think it's the boathouse in Dalesford. But realistically, if I get into dire straits or anything... Um, any point from here onwards because really the path just goes around the side of Hepburn Springs and then down the side of Dalesford all the way down the side of Dalesford and then back into town my goal today we have 22 kilometers let's uh, zoom out here can I get it all on the map oh not quite oh a little bit smaller there we go there we go start point end point 22 kilometers i think it's about 10 or 12 kilometers to this point and surprisingly it's like 13 kilometers all the way brr, all this weaving through here back and forth but um, it looks nice and green here so i'm hoping it's like foresty trails soft stuff to walk on because i'm not going to lie my feet are a little sore this morning but we'll see how we go no steady shot here everything's still packed away well not packed away i'm just getting everything finished up I'm just about to put my shoes on. I've gotten changed, packed down everything. I'm uh, practicing the idea of getting everything all packed away and leaving the tarp till last in case I do get one of those days where it's absolutely raining and I uh, have to do everything under the tarp. So, yes, that's all right. We'll get this all packed away and then we're going to hit the road. I'm not pulling salt. Ah! Is that a cramp? <laughs> Not a good sign when you getting cramps in your backpack on at the start of the day. <sighs> yeah, I'm not pulling the solar panels on. 
as well. I think I'm going to need them. I'll give you the tip. This uh, raincoat I'm wearing, it's a little fragrant because I've basically been sweating in it oh, for the last three days or well, two days. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I feel dehydrated. <sighs> Make sure I haven't forgotten anything. No straps on the tree. Nothing on the ground. Base camp. Up side. All looks good. Nothing left. All right. Let's get into this bad boy. 47 Ks. 22 Ks to go. 808. Start your engines. Well, we're off and running. I'll tell you what though, some carnage through here. Look at all these trees down. Now the area I was camping in, which is only about half a K back, did not look like, whoop, up and over. Did not look like this. This is, uh, well see, one of the things I was looking at when I was trying to find a campsite last night was somewhere that didn't wasn't totally exposed to the valley because I figured the wind would come straight out the valley there and hit the trees. And all the trees I could see, see you look at this one just here, that one just there in front, it snapped towards us. And that's what I was noticing yesterday is, um, wow, that's a big one over there, look at that one. Well, that's a big snapper -oony. holy mackerel. Um, yes, I was looking to see which way the trees had snapped. And so yeah, I uh, was looking for somewhere that didn't have whoop, rocks. Um, well, one wasn't exposed to the wind coming out of the valley, but also just the um, oh sorry guys, a bit bumpy here. Uh, wasn't exposed to the wind coming out of the valley, and also that there wasn't a whole lot of trees already down because I figured that was a a bit of a sign. But then you sort of go well. Uh, the fact that trees down highlighting the point that all the weak trees have been knocked down or <laughs> are you camping around trees that uh, are almost going to fall but they didn't quite fall down the last storm now truth be told i was a bit nervous when i um was looking for somewhere because it, it was a bit breezy not windy oh it was a little bit windy um not like torrential oh look at this one right across the path that one's been snapped oh that one's been snapped to the right holy mackerel carnage through here oh look at that look at that snapped well and truly oh it's been around around the other side look at that that one has come down big time. And then five minutes later, it's all good again. <laughs> so yes. Oh, so I just set a, uh, another data point on my watch to show distance remaining till the end of the hike. And it was showing 24.8, which I'm a little bit surprised at. So I'm kind of hoping that's not the case, but if it is, Guess we're doing 24.8 kilometers today. Ah, look at all these rocks. Rocks, rocks, more rocks. Look at I'll pause so you get a good look at it. This is what I don't like walking on. It's not too bad. I walk just to the right here to try and keep off them. But this is the kind of thing that I find. See this stuff here. When you look at like this walking on this type of stuff, because you put your foot on it and it just I mean you could probably do an ankle, but it's more the point that you're um you're just walking on uneven ground the whole day and i find the soles of my feet just get sore but uh yeah all right i can hear a noise is that water yes there's a stream to our right oh, i can see it drop off right there i wasn't sure if it was a stream or a breeze in the trees i wonder if we're going to go over it we're going to assume so Oh, well, kangaroo. Here he goes. Oh, I don't know if I got him. Oh, bugger. It was like one of those black joeys, black wallabies. Oh, 
more over there. Quietly, quietly. Well, this one looks pretty clean. Look at that. Trickling through. The fact that that is so clear, well, one, it shows you that uh, no vehicles have been through here for a long time. And uh, down off there. Nice. Get a load of this water. I was nervous about not having enough water. This is literally the side of the road. And the water is crystal clear. And it's been pretty well running all the way down the road. So it must go all the way down into that creek. I did notice that there was a couple of points where there was like runoff, say from this side, and it was running across and in. So this is literally like another little creek. And as I say, the water, is crystal clear. I mean, it's got a yellow tinge to it, but has it got a yellow tinge because the clay is yellow? Or is it actually, see there it looks a bit darker. Normally I'd be like, oh no, you wouldn't be able to drink, I'd be very hesitant about drinking water out of there because it's like you know, oil off the road and stuff like that, but I just can't get over how clear that is. All right, dry diggings, bushland reserve. Um, I've been walking past all these little houses. I shouldn't say little houses, they're probably all big properties. Is that just that little square? That's the reserve? No, surely not. Maybe it means this whole area out here as well. <sighs> so I've been making pretty good time along this road. It's uh, compacted, so I'm just trying to walk along here on the right-hand side in amongst the leaves and stuff. I've put the uh, rain cover over the back of the backpack because, well, it's started to sprinkle a little bit. Oh, wow, look at this. Ridge House, 318 Saw Pit Gully Road. Well, that's where I am. That's a flash, uh, I don't want to say signpost, letterbox. <laughs> Announcement of where you live. Very nice. Hello to every, any, anyone that lives at Ridge House. Um, yeah, we're uh, doing all right. As I said, I put the rain coat, I mean the rain cover over the backpack. It's just starting to do a very slight misty drizzle. So I figure I'll put that on now. Saves me having to stop if it does start to really rain. All right, she's a bit windy. <laughs> a little bit cold. <laughs> That's right. It's uh, I'd rather, I was just thinking to myself, would I rather a dry, warm day or a drizzly overcast day? And I'm like, probably a drizzly overcast day. Oh, it is a little bit breezy. Oh yes, well we are finally off that uh, that road, which is probably a double-edged sword. It uh, destroys your feet, but then you make crack in time. Um, we're walking along next to some main road, I'm not sure where it is now, but uh, I love this. Pine needles, pine forest, the sounds of nature. <laughs> oh dear. Ah oh, well, two out of three ain't bad. Um, yes. What are we up to? What time is it? It's a uh, quarter to ten. We've got seven, just under 18 kilometres to go. So what have we done? It's 54 from 47. That's three, four. So we've done seven k's in. Am I, is my maths right? Seven k's in approaching two hours, which isn't too bad my moving average is about four and a half kilometers now by the time you sort of average everything out but there's not much you can do about that um i'll tell you what i might be having some panadol sooner rather than later though see if i can dull the ache in these feet i've been stretching that left foot or the left hamstring to alleviate the plantar fasciitis in that foot which is uh helping the right pad is uh, a little bit sore, 
well I shouldn't say a little bit sore it's already aching which after th two days of solid hiking I'm not kind of surprised um, but what do you do what do you do oh, mentally I'm pretty good uh, I think that's probably half the battle if you can stay mentally positive uh, up over this one uh, Oh jeez! Uh, uh, straddle the... Oh, don't fall over! Oh jeez! Did I tell you what? Uh, truck! Uh, tell you what, these poles, best things I ever... Uh, best things I ever invested in. Honestly, makes such a huge difference. Uh, well... We're doing all right. I sort of set myself a little mini goal of 12 k's to go by 12 o'clock. I figure if I can do that, that would be pretty good. That's sort of averaging about four k's an hour. So I think that's a uh, realistic goal. And then it puts me halfway by lunchtime and then really three to four hours to knock over the last bit. What I'm really hoping is the last 12 or 13 k's that runs down the western side of Dalesford is actually really foresty, green, soft path. That would be ideal. Um, I'm hoping it's not <laughs> rocky, you know, bouldery, hard compact dirt. A little bit like this is right now. Oh no, this isn't too bad. There's no rocks, or few rocks. <sighs> All good. Alrighty, can I go over there and drop into the chocolate mill for the service for the serious chocolateholic? Oh, I've struggled only to read that from this distance. Oh yeah, oh, looks good, sounds good. Got other things to do. I swear I am not going to the chocolate mill. I promise I'm not going to the chocolate mill. No, seriously, I'm not. The path comes down here and turns left. I was like, do we have to go through the chocolate mill? I get much closer than that, I might have to visit the chocolate mill. Oh, yeah. grass. Oh, sweet, sweet grass. Oh, I love you. I've just been, just crossed that little bridge there, coming up these stairs here, I'm like, oh yeah, keep working, keep working, keep working, oh, looks like I've got some serious four-wheel driving to do, oop, through the mud and the clay, that looks like it's fairly new, looks kind of moist over that side, oh, you know what I hate about this, is it's probably a touch high for me to go over, but it's too low for me to comfortably go under. Ah, oh, bugger me. I'm going over. I just, oh wait a sec. Oh, it's higher than my hips. Can I get over? Give it a bit of a push. Oh, it's not going anywhere. You guys all wanted to see this, didn't you? Oh, wait a sec. Okay, leg over, you ready? Leg over, oh jeez. Push with the sticks, oh, push with the sticks. Not touching the ground, not touching the ground. Oh, crush the jets cracker. Oh, there we go, real good. Oh. I made it. <laughs> oh, a few more steps to go. Thankfully, looks like the path is like this for a bit, so I can definitely do with this for a while. for a break <sighs> it's funny I've got to head up that next but the funny thing is I spin around here where I've just come out I'm not sure if you guys can see it just there there's some yellow tape and there's a white sign above it I've come from the other direction coming this way and that sign basically says this trail is closed due to recent storm damage um, warning blah, blah blah I'm not even sure if it said closed or proceed with caution or whatever I'm like um 
yeah, there's nothing at the other end. <laughs> I've walked up thinking, oh, maybe the track ahead's all closed, so I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do. And, uh, yeah, no, track ahead's not closed. Track I've just been going along apparently is closed, or at least warnings for it. So, yeah. So, I've just started to stop and take a break. What is it? 20 to 11. We've got a hair under 16 kilometres to go. Sorry, 15 kilometres to go. I'm still on track to do my 12 by 12. I've got an hour and 20 minutes to do, uh, an hour and 20 to do, uh, what do I say, it was 15, to do 3Ks. Can you tell I'm tired? It's, um, I'm getting to that point. Oh, oh I need a shave. But uh, yeah, I want to take a break and just get off my feet for a while. I took some Panadol just before 10. What did I say it was? Just before 11. I can't take Panadol every hour. I might wait a little bit longer. I'm getting hungry though, so I'm gonna have another protein bar and uh, yeah, relax. Oh, basically there's something for Hazy. Medic, what is that? Um, it's got horns, I'm assuming it's a goat. I don't know. It's got a very protruded lower, I mean that's a big skull with massive eye sockets, unless it's like a deer. Maybe it's a deer. Oh my goodness, are they over there? Are they um, kangaroos? Are they? No. Maybe? Yes. There he goes, he moved. Oh, too far. There he goes. There's at least one over there. I would suggest there's a couple. that shed there's a shed way up there by itself look at that mountain there it's very it's all covered in trees and then right next to it, it's all cleared i wonder if that's because the weather comes from that side so they left it that to sort of stop the erosion on the i don't know what side that is south when it's this cloudy i've got no idea what direction i couldn't even tell you where the sun is right now no nope, i'd be totally guessing all right Time to sit down, have a rest for maybe five, ten minutes, and then we will be back on the road again. heading off I'll tell you what I had to start to, I was going to get cold like obviously the um, the woolen shirt the merino wool shirt t-shirt I've got underneath this jacket is wet with sweat but uh, I noticed that it hasn't rained today and there's patches of the rain jacket that are wet which tells me that's actually the sweat from the inside leaking out like you know evaporating leaking oh, leaking probably not the right word but you know, oh, if you don't like seeing dead animals, look away. Medic. Poor old bugger, I didn't realize. There you go, hazy, that's two. Two in 20 meters, I've had nothing else for the whole trip. Oh, um, yeah, so I think that's just the sweat, you know, evaporating out through the jacket, so yeah. Oh, those kangaroos, I yelled out, medic. <laughs> Can, can you see them over there? They're bouncing over near the uh, that water tank over there. There they go, near the water tank, down the ridge line. There they go. <sighs> anyway, what I was saying was, I was getting cold. I could feel myself dropping in temperature. And uh, even my hands and stuff are cold now, so I've uh, piled everything back on. We're 15 k's out from Dalesford. Feeling good, had another oats bar, stretched my legs, had some water, and uh, yeah. So, morale is up, feet are still attached. <laughs> um, yeah, only 15 k's to go, and it looks like we're just actually, um, oh, I'll show you on the map. 
for uh, just, uh, I want to say going across the north, hedging, edging the northern section of the Hepburn something or other. I can't remember what the name of it is. But yeah, oh, already got a left turn coming up. All right, I was just coming up here and I saw the blaze going left and I was like, oh, we go left. And I realized I only had a bike on it. And then you go around here and Hepburn Regional Park is just here. And uh, this, I checked the map and this is where we go. So this is actually now the bit that's skirting around Dalesford. So we're at the northern tip of Hepburn Springs now. And then I saw this, I'm like, hmm, how do I feel about this? Astro, AstroTurf? No, Bitumen. Bitumen Path. I'm like, um, it's gonna make for some amazing travel time, I think. As long as it's not downhill, because it's a bit, uh, but I'm also very conscious of it melting, and I do mean melting my feet in hiking boots. So, yeah, <sighs> that's okay. <clears throat> I've been really enjoying the uh, landscape. We uh, went past a couple of, I don't know, like pine forest plantation areas, just off to our right, back a bit. And uh, yes, this little gully down there has been running to our right. It's probably got some water in it. It sort of varies in size as we go along, um, but yeah. I really do enjoy the uh, the pine. Oh, too high, too high. Sorry, guys. The pine forest <clears throat> kind of situation. Oh, you can see the water down there now. So now, question time. Uh, do I get one of these DJI Osmos to improve the stability of the footage? Because somebody commented on the last video how much difference it made, and I'm like, oh, okay. But I've also seen reviews of um, a GoPro, I think it's a GoPro 9, like basically comparing the, well actually I was thinking about rather than getting a Osmo, getting a DJI Pocket, which records 4K footage and also has the gimbal. But then I saw comparisons between it and a GoPro, which has the GoPro appears to be smaller and also has um blah, 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 uh, like really good uh i was gonna say traction control stability control oh here we go special water how mineral springs are formed there you go i thought someone was coming up behind me then for a second mineral spring slate sandstone yeah i've been definitely getting some sandstone into me all right so, uh, I suppose if you're walking this way from the other side, oh, this is Golden Spring. Ah, oh, I've got to try some. Oh, wait a second, let's just have a little, what's this say? Oh, mineral springs temporary closed. Do not drink. Routine testing has shown that the mineral spring water is currently of poor quality and is not suitable for drinking. This spring will be reopened when it is suitable for drinking. Interesting. What, does it look funny, I wonder? Let's give it a pump. Oh, gee whiz. Oh, no, you go backwards? Yeah. Oh, hello. One pump, you get a lot of juice. Hmm. Interesting. Well, well, I'm thinking my uh, next few kilometres should be quite a lovely little trail.
Oh yes, I did it. 12 o'clock, 12 k's to go. Yeah. I've, uh, I had to slow down a little bit because I took some footage. Look at these blackberries. I mean, they've all been sprayed, but they go all the way up the val oh, valley, gully, yeah. There's a big, massive river just here to my left. Oh, uh, path, I'm assuming I'm going to have a path like this till the end of the trail. I think, maybe, we'll see. Something else I was uh, considering when I was planning this trip was uh, I looked on the map and I could see this was this track that we're on now was whoop, was uh, meandering along the river and my thoughts were I wonder if I could then camp along here somewhere. I'm thinking oh yeah that'd probably be not a bad idea. I'd just like to state for anyone that's contemplating that um, yeah no. I've not found anywhere along here along this particular track so far that isn't much wider than what you're looking at at the moment and basically either side of it is uh, well I'll give you a look drop off this side sometimes it's a 20 meter or maybe 20 feet 10 meter drop down to the water at the moment it's just all uh, blackberry bushes and then same on this side just all blackberry bushes now that's not to say we might come to a spot down here that, uh, you know, is thinking about being reasonable for camping, but I'm yet to see it at the moment. Like right now, this path is super wide compared to a couple of bits. A couple of bits, it was literally as wide as the path is now, and then maybe a foot either side, if that, or sorry, maybe a foot to the side, and then, um, oh, tree branch and then a uh, big drop off. So yeah, camping, not so much. Would you look at that? So we've just crossed over the freeway, the highway, a big road. The river's now on our right. It was on our left there for a while. Uh, less uh, blackberry bushes. Ah, oh, fellow hiker. How is that first bloke I've seen, well, First person I've seen on the trail for, I don't think I've seen anyone on the trail, have I? Besides that lady, uh, Imogen, that gave me the water, I don't think I've actually bumped into anyone. I've seen people driving past and stuff, but that was it. He was going for a walk, concentrate on this bend. It's a bit of a drop off the edge there. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna stop. Look at a beautiful view down here, guys. Ah, oh, yeah, the bloke was just saying, he was just coming from this other side. There's a creek, I think that's the river. Well, unless there's another one just there that joins with this one. And they're both coming down here and joining that one. Uh, and it's all flowing that way because there's another river just here. But that bloke was just saying there's a lot less blackberry bushes and at the path. Pretty well just goes like this. It just undulates up and down all the way to the end. So happy days. Not sure if you can see it, but just there on that tree, just there, there's a little white sign that said, uh, do not eat the prickly pear as it's been sprayed. And I was like, oh, maybe these aren't blackberry bushes. Maybe they're prickly pear. I'm thinking, I'd I thought prickly pear was like a big cactus thing. I walk along another 20 meters. Oh yeah. Imagine slipping off the trail just here and rolling down into that bad boy. Oh, you'd be push, picking thistles out of all parts of your body for quite a while. Oh, actually I don't think there's too many thistles on it. Not that I'm gonna test the theory. What's more, you roll down, bust through that thing, covered in prickles and stuff. Because if you can't see it on the other side, it's all blackberry bushes, and you go ah, through there into the blackberry bushes. Oh, look at that! Oh, that's a world of pain. On the other hand, that's kind of beautiful. All right, we are home stretch. What is it? 12:30. Oh, and I've only got. Oh, you can't see it. It's like a secret. 10.58 kilometers to go. We've done 62. Wow, 10 and a half k's. Happy days. Wow, looks like this trip is just saving the best to last. Look at all that. Oh, I love myself a good river. Don't like the blackberry bushes so much, but beautiful river. See, it'd be nice to be able to camp down there somewhere. I mean, if you could get down there, maybe you could camp down there, like on this side maybe, but blackberry bushes everywhere. So I'd be very surprised if you could get through. Oh. 
path is just undulating now up and down a few big rocks but on the whole not too bad It was funny, I was actually contemplating, do I go sit down there and have some lunch? And I was like, oh yeah, and then for a split, and then I, was, I only considered it for a split second. And I was like, how am I going to get down? It's like, I'm not sure if you guys can see that. I would say that is a five meter drop, and then it's just blackberries to get through. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, maybe not. Oh, I love this water though, look at this. Which is absolutely motoring through. They've had a lot of rain. Well, this is the first point we've actually gotten down to, we're actually at water level. So you could fill up your water here. Um, it's actually open on the other side there. So if you get across the water, you might be able to camp over there. But still, I have not covered any area along this track that I'd consider you'd be able to camp. Oi. Uh. Oh. What are we at? 124. 8.39, so 8.4 kilometers to go. It's only almost half past one. I didn't even realize there's a little yellow ribbon there. Oh, now I've just got to be conscious of, this is wet. Oh, I'm taking my jacket off, trying to air it out. I think I'm gonna be taking some more Panadol. Another, I was hoping for one of those chocolate protein bars. That's all right, I'll have a, Yogurt, almond and apricot. All natural bakery oat slice. There's another one in there that didn't have yogurt on it and I was like, oh, I'm not sure I could stomach a, a dry apricot bar. A dry oats bar. I think I need some moisture. So I'm gonna have, oh, my feet. Ooh, yeah. Oh, dropped a bit. Oh, it's all gone pear-shaped. Oh, uh, like, uh, no, nah, two second rule, too long. <sighs> Plus it dropped in the mud. Oh boy. Oh, it's funny, I rang Joanne, well it's not funny, I rang Joanne, I don't know, about a little while back. And probably wasn't actually that much further later after I saw that bloke. Spoke to her for a few minutes, hung up the phone, literally 10 seconds later the bloke came up behind me. I'm assuming he must have passed us and then just gone to the road and turned around and come back again because he caught me quick and then said g'day as he was going past and he was and he was gone there's a frog or something right just here right just here my english is amazing at the moment oh so yes my feet are sore as i was saying it'll be another panadol another couple of panadol eight eight point four k's mm. If I had um, if I was camping somewhere tonight and then going again another day, I don't know. I think 20, 25 k's is probably my limit. I mean, I'm hot. I don't know, my fitness is okay, I guess. I don't know. I'm only, my moving speed is 4.2. But I think that might be my moving speed for the entire trip. Um, mm. My feet is by far the thing. Oh, you know what? I'm not complaining about my feet anymore. I was just thinking about, not that I keep going about hazy, it's funny. Oh, I, I used to watch, not that I used to, I, uh, Syntax 77 is probably my favorite bloke to watch at the moment. Well, not my, I really, really enjoy his videos. He does an excellent video. If you haven't checked out Syntax 77, go check him out and, oh, huge mozzie. Oh, are you kidding me? Do I need to get some spray onto me? Huge mozzie just landed on my jacket. Probably because it smells worse than I do. That rain jacket's absorbed a lot of sweat. 
Syntax77 probably does the best videos that I enjoy. Scotty's Gone Walkabout. Eric Off Track. Now, Eric Off Track hasn't put out a video for a long time. Um, so, Eric Off Track, get onto it, buddy. Um, I really enjoy his videos. They both go off trail, like they just go four wheel driving, like not as in a car, but they just pick somewhere and then they just go, right, I'm just going to go through this valley and off I go. That'd be the last you guys ever saw of me. <clears throat> I think we're both right. And then I've started watching, oh sorry, Set to Hike, Haley at Set to Hike is also really good. She does a very short video, but her videography is amazing. So um, shout out to Haley. And then the other one, as I've been mentioning in this video, is Hazy from Hazy Outdoors. Go check him out. As I said, I just watched a series of nine videos that he did of this big long hike. But then you watch this other video where he hiked, I want to say it's the, I'm not sure if it's the three tallest summits in Scotland, somewhere like that. I'll put a link, link somewhere here to that video. Drop a comment, tell him I sent you over. Um, and he walked the three summits barefoot, okay? And it's not like it was, you know, a nice gradual, you know, meander up along through a forest. No, it was like hardcore rocks. And I was watching it just going, oh. And I don't want to say he made it look easy, but, I mean, he would have been struggling, like, oh. So, um, yes. I believe he used to be like in the Rangers or something like that, and he calls himself a Power Ranger. mate. Hazy, if you're a Power Ranger, I'm a freaking Teletubby. Like, honestly, I'm whinging about my feet getting sore, walking on sort of mud and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, walking up a mountain in bare feet, a little bit crazy, but also unbelievable. I wonder how many Panadol or uh, Nurofen he took to do that. Unbelievable. Houston, we have a problem. I just ran out of water. I literally just stopped videoing, had another bite of this finished chewing that, walked over to my backpack, went to suck out some water, and I started sucking bubbles, which tells me my back, my bladder in there is uh, empty. Ooh. Now, having said that, there's a river right there. What is the river water quality like? 8.4 Ks. I'm not sure I could do 8.4 Ks with no more water. Yeah. I'm going to have to put some thought into this. All right, game plan. Just checked on the old map. It looks like we're only 500 meters from the blowhole. And there's a, excuse me, and there's a car park near the blowhole. So that's a potential. If there's a tap there, we fill up. Now, if we go past that, it looks like it's probably about a kilometer, 1.3, a one and a half k's down to Bryce's flat picnic ground. Now I would assume a picnic ground would also potentially have a tap for good water. Now the only reason I say that and I don't fill up here is because this water is moving quite quickly, um, and also it's actually a bit of a challenge. It, the ground sort of goes like this and then it drops down into the water, and I don't really want to go for a swim. So I'm thinking if I can hold out a kilometre or two, um, I don't think I'll need to hold out that far. I could probably fill up at one of those spots. Now, all that said, the path we're following goes along next to the river the whole time. So if I do get into dire straits where I'm like, okay, I definitely need some water now, I can always just four-wheel drive it down and top up the water. But it is 20 to two almost. We've got 8.4 k's to go. Let's bust out these last kilometers. Oh, just had to slog it up a bit of a hill. But what do we have here? Track goes straight ahead to Bryce's flat. Oh. However, the blowhole off to our right. Oh, how far? It doesn't say how far. Oh, no. What do we think, folks? Should we go check it out? Yeah, I think we're going to. All right, that was quicker than I thought. It was only like 100 meters down. There's a sign just here. The blowhole, which is just to our right. We'll have a quick look at that. And then... Uh, yeah, I'm going to double back up. So it's just here. Not sure what it's supposed to do. There's actually stairs that go even lower over there. But I'll give you the tip. My legs are too tired to be going down all the way to there. So you guys will get the view from 
this platform. Oh, oh wow. No need to panic, drone rescued. Seriously, I was trying to get a good shot coming in here. It was just there, just here, and had an error about this spot here. And then I flew, flew it right, and it crashed. Where was it? On that next, probably about, not that, yeah, that bit just there. So I went all the way down the stairs, across there to that bit. Across there, all that was slippery. I got splashed a bit there, climbed up here, got it, and I was like, am I going to climb across here? No. Climbed up here, through here, up and over. Oh. That was a little sketchy. On the other side, on the other hand, sorry, this blowhole is really amazing. But now, when I saw the footage, I think there's a hole all the way through, so I don't know where the water's coming from, but I see the river on the other side. And on top of that, I just checked the time, and my watch has gone flat. So it's uh, 10 past two. I quickly just plugged it into the big charger. This bad boy should uh, pump some juice into it. I only need to get it like five or 10 percent, and I'll be enough to get for the rest of the day. But yeah, I um, I was thinking about it earlier today. I was I need to change one of the little data uh, readouts to show you the battery because I hadn't checked it. And this morning when I started, uh, when I was, before I started the GPS, it said two days. And obviously, as I've been hiking today, it chews more when it's actually tracking, obviously. I hope you guys can hear me. Maybe I should go like this. And uh, so obviously it's chewed up too much. So I figure good as reason as any is to have another little break just here. Um, yeah, a bit disappointed with that. But you live and learn. After the near-death experience I just had, what's a flat watch? Alright guys, I'm not going to lie. So, as you guys saw, there was no water at the blowhole. Um, and also, do we want to just recap what's happened in the last hour? I ran out of water. I almost smashed my drone while flying it. I then had to do some sketchy mountain climbing to get the drone. And then my watch went flat. Oh my goodness. But that's okay. Because if that's the worst that happens on this trip, happy days. So I just went past uh, that campground, whatever it was, can't remember the name. Ben put the name at the bottom, whatever. Uh, there was nothing there. It was just like a fire pit and the river. So I had a look at the map and two kilometers down the track here, there is a car park and toilets. So. I'm like, well, I'll just push on to the toilets and get a drink there. I'm not in dire straits by any stretch of the imagination. However, I am thirsty because I've got this jacket on and I'm basically sweating nearly all the, well, pretty well consistently. Um, but I've been drinking all day. So I think it'll take a while for me to get dehydrated. And as you guys can hear, the river's just down there. It's 2Ks, it's not very far. I'm just gonna cruise along until I get there. If I get to there and there's no water there, then we might have to reevaluate that situation. Um, but I feel fine. I am tired. Time is three, four minutes to three, and we have 5.93 kilometers to go. So we're under six kilometers back in. Now, the other thing is, let's say we got to this spot and there was no water there. In two kilometers so at that point we're at what would we say 5.9 we're at five <laughs> hey ben what's five minus two 3.9 kilometers to the end of the track um and the last couple of kilometers of the track are going to be in town like i'm heading into town so yeah worst case scenario 
I could um, get a drink out of somebody's yard or just go and ask or go into a shop. I tell you what, I might be going into a shop. If there's any shops open, I'll be, uh, or I can just lick one of those puddles. Um, I'll be going in and get myself a Powerade or something like that. So, yeah. Whew, let's knock over these kilometres. Because there's a little waterfall there, I'm not even going to filter it. I'm just going to sit this. Yep. And take the carabiner off the end of it. Trying to get wet. Get that rock. There we go. Oh, that little watery goodness. All right, we don't need five liters, one and a half liters, that'll do. Now check out the color. The color is pretty good. That's only just off. That looks good to me. Only problem is now the, uh, the outside's a bit wet. But you know what? First world problems when you've just solved your water problem. Oh, thirsty boy. Oh yeah. Mm. As soon as I take a drink, I'm like, how the heck did I think I was going to make two Ks without water? Oh. So the big question is how much do I just drink? From one and a half? No, oh, I've basically made no difference to it. Excellent. Holy mackerel, look at that one. That is a fresh one too. All those roots are fresh, and that's the trunk of it going that way. I don't know what this thing over here is. My watch is going ballistic. What are you going crazy? Oh, I'm off course, apparently. Whatever. Holy mackerel, that's fresh too. Look at that. Whoo wee Bet you that made some noise when it came down. That is crazy. All right, I just came along this path here, and as you come up, there's this shed, and I was like... What's this old shed doing sitting here? And they've got, uh, you know, fencing around the front. I was like, oh, it must be so people don't hurt themselves. And I was like, oh, oh, wait a second. Oh, no, it's a mine shaft. Like, legit. Hello? That is legitimately deep. I can see some timber way down there. And that's about it. That's a long way down. Wow, this river just is powering through here. That is a lot of water. I wonder if that's two separate rivers or it's just got a bit of an island in the middle. No, it appears to be one river. It's all coming from there, comes around this side and splits off there. So yeah, a little island in the middle there of blackberry bushes. <laughs> Look at the damage through here. I glanced up and I was like, oh, there's been a fire through here. And I was like, wait a second. These, yeah, some of them are burnt. But I would say almost half, a quarter of the trees have fallen over. That is crazy. This is that campground area thing that had toilets. Is that a basin in there I can see? Oh, hold still. That looks like a basin. I wonder if it has running water. I'm assuming it does. Must be on tap water. Tap water. It's town water. Because there is, does not appear to be a tank. Oh boy. We're not going down there though. We're cranking. <laughs> I feel like this video is just turning into me taking clips of the uh, of the river. Oh, I just can't get over how fast flowing it is. smashing out the speed at the moment the path has opened up uh, I'm just going slow with the camera less than 3 k's to go and I'm smashing here along at a speed I actually know it would have just stopped yeah it just stopped uh, like 5.7 k's now so yeah smashing along Whew, let's see if I can beat uh, Joanne and the kids to the boat shed just came around the corner here and this is Sutton Number one spring, a little bridge there, so obviously you can help yourself to some spring water there. Another little tap over here, oh. and lo and behold, it says 
there's only 450 meters left to the end of the track. Now I'm hoping, what's this, Lake Dalesford, 600 meters. Oh, 10 minutes. I'll give you the tip, it's not gonna take me six, it's not gonna take me uh, 10 minutes to 600 meters. Oh boy. So I suppose I could start the debrief now. Um, what did I think of it? Well, uh, let's get me in the picture. Um, look, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't think it was much chop. Um, really, from here, from Dalesford all the way to um, Hepburn Springs, nice little river, but it's totally overrun with um, blackberry bushes. And up until this point right here, unless you were gonna camp right here somewhere, there's nowhere to camp. So if this was a legit day for me, it's 4.30, I would have spent the last half an hour trying to find somewhere to camp. Uh, and truth be told, I would probably spin you around. I would probably use those two trees right there and just go, you know what, I'm camping here for the night. After I got all this water, I, um, I ended up knocking back a couple of Panadol. What do I feel like I'm opening this shot? I'm so exhausted. Oh, yeah, so I knocked over some Panadol and from about the 5k mark it got a bit better the path was a bit sort of so much so that you could probably um well i was able to put some speed down put a bit of a dint in the distance but oh my goodness that's what i was thinking on the way if you were doing this back the other way i'm not sure if i just said this or not i thought it if you were starting at the top at the southern end going north to bendigo this bit here would be like, oh, it's not too bad, not too bad. The track just gets steadily worse. Like all through here, you can't camp, besides those trees back there, or I don't know, wherever else you can camp along here. And then, as I said in part one, part one was a nightmare. It was so hard yakker on my feet, that I'd be like, basically you do the Goldfields track hike, and the last leg of it is just pain. Pain City. Oh, I must be getting close. I must be getting close. Oh, all right, very soon. And this is the second one of these I've gone past. It's just like steps down into the water. This is the sign for it over here. Taking the waters. If you want to read it, pause and have a read. I'm assuming it's not warm. The fact that my uh, phone is no longer bright tells me I am under 5% juice which uh, we're getting a bit light on well I made it you come up that little track there and here's the lake very very nice all right I'm gonna go track down Joanne and die oh, I'm so exhausted <clears throat> all right if you uh you go, go, go. So that's what's that? 70 k is done. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe, drop a comment down below if I missed anything I should have probably included. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next one.